Kitalam River is one of the freshwater rivers that enriched the Tirumunapati country. Tiruvathagai Viratanam, where the lord who possessed Upper Puruman rose up, is on the banks of this river. Tirunavalur, where the god who saved Sundarmurthy lives, is located near this river. Between these two Kshetras was located the Rajapat from Thande country to Nadu country and Chola country in those days. The section crossing the Rajapat Ketala River is always lively. In the trees on the banks of the river one can hear the birds chirping and the sound of their feather beating. Travelers would untie the cows from the carts and eat rice. As they eat, the rice they playfully toss in the air is picked up by crows. At the beginning of the month of Apasi, the Kitala River was flooding more than usual. As a result, there was a lot of noise from pilgrims who stayed there to drink rice at the peak. The travelers were surprised to hear a loud noise that drowned out all the sounds. Some of them looked ashore. At first only a layer of dust was visible. Then the royal entourages like elephants, horses, palanquins, circle bearers etc. were seen coming. As the entourage approached a little closer, the shouts of the builders were clearly heard. In the twelfth prayer, the brave warrior who entered the battlefield, the Virapandian headed Gopareksari, the fearsome lion in the dream of the double mandalas, the lord of the throated mandala, the hero of the northern direction, the son of the Sundara Chola emperor of the three worlds, the Aditha Karikala Chola Maharaja is coming. Parag on hearing this slogan that echoed in the eight directions with the voice of thunder, everyone in the Ketala River rushed to the shore. Eager to see such a valiant warrior, they left the road in the middle of the river and stood aside on both sides. Builders, trumpeters and relic bearers were the first to reach the water sector. Behind the retinue came three horses, side by side, together, three young warriors mounted on each of the three horses. When people saw them in the distance, they pointed at them and started talking about who they are. Adida Kari Kalar is the one who comes on the horse in the middle. Don't you see when you see the golden crown? How the crown shines in the sun! Said one. Are you going to tell me about this crown? Shouldn't you see the crown of bells worn by the dark-haired man? It will shine like a million suns and make your eyes dazzle. Said another. That's not the crown of Karakal Valavan, brother. That's what is said formally. Now Sundara Chola is wearing the bell crown that was made in the time of Parantaka Emperor. For how many more days, I don't know. Said another. This is how Sundara Chola's life has been calculated for some time. It seems that he will be Chiranjeevi. Said the first speaker. So be it. As long as he lives, the country and the city will be free from confusion. There is no need to say that, ever since the news came that Pani's wealth had been carried away by the sea, the entire Chola country has been in a state of confusion. All those who came from there have been saying that when will a fight break out? Fighting against anyone? Fighting for what? It is said that there will be a fight between the Palyavatarayas and the Kajumbalar Velar. It is to prevent such a thing from happening that the small princes gather at the Sambuvarayar mansion in Kadampur. Aditha Kari Kalar also goes there. The horses are approaching, don't rush and talk. One warned, have you seen how pale Prince Aditha Kari Kalar's face is? He asked. How could he not be disfigured? Aditya Kari Kalar has prana on his brother. If he does not know about such a brother, would not Tamayan be sad? Even his father is immobile. All this is natural in the world, brother. This is not the reason for the prince's face. Kari Kalar wishes to invade the twin zones, he is worried that it will not work. Why didn't it work? Who's stopping him from invading? Who else? It's the ravagers. They're refusing to provide logistics for the invasion. They are teaching reasons for nothing. None of you know the real reason, said one. You who know everything. You will tell me the real reason. Asked another. Aditha Kari Kalar was in love with a Pandian woman. When the prince went to war in the north, the great Palyavatarayar married her. Now she is the young queen of Palyavar and is ruling Cholanath. Since then, Aditha Kari Kalar's heart has been broken. Maybe, 
maybe. Didn't the elders say that every fight in the world is caused by some woman? What elders, brother, have said that? Sheer madness. If the prince loved a girl, would she go and marry a sixty-year-old man? Don't the tellers have any respect for the hearers? Then I will not marry Aditha Kari Kaler yet? Will you tell me? Hold still. Here they are approaching. The one coming on the right-hand side of the prince looks like Parthipendra Pallava. Who is the one coming on the left side? Vandiyathava of the Vanara clan. No, no. Kandamaran, the son of the Sambowariyar of Kadampur. The Sambowariyar has sent his own son to fetch him because the prince might not come if he sends him the straw. From this it seems that something is very important. That important matter may also be related to royalty. As long as Adita Kari Kalar is not married, the minor kings will be trying to trap him. The girl who marries him first will be blessed to sit on the throne of the Chola Empire. The people standing on the banks of the Ketala River were having fun talking about all the above. The three horses came and stood by the water bank. The chariot behind the horses stopped a short distance away under the royal tree. Thirukovalar Malay Aman, an eighty-year-old warrior, was in that chariot. Aditha Karikalan, who was on his horse at the edge of the water, turned and saw him.